Today is a pretty cool day because one of our viewers reached out to us after she saw one of my YouTube videos. Susan was having a hard time finding a jeweler to replace her missing diamond and size up her ring. She wanted it to be sized up in a way where the pattern would maintain its distinguished look. Luckily, this is something I specialize in and I was more than happy to work with her. She has a three-row David Yerman confetti ring with hematite, onyx, and diamonds. After I cut it and stretch it open to the new size, I measure the gap and find a new piece of silver which I'll use to fill it in. Then I simply transfer the measurement line onto this new piece and cut it out. The hematite and onyx in Susan's ring can't take heat, so to be able to solder on the ring without having to remove all the stones, I submerge the ring in water. I'll need a few small pieces of medium flow silver solder to permanently hold the new piece in place. When soldering on a ring partially submerged in water, I have to use way more heat than I normally would because I'm constantly fighting against the water, which wants to keep the ring at or below 200 degrees. Once the soldering is done, the ring comes out heavily oxidized, so to clean it off I soak it in some acid pickling solution. It was important to Susan that she doesn't lose the brand stamp, so I'll be extremely careful when sanding the ring so I don't remove it. First, I start with a low grit sanding wheel to do most of the smoothing, and then I follow it up with a medium grit wheel. Now that the inside of the ring is smooth, I'm going to hammer the sizing piece in my ring mandrel to finish getting the ring to the right size. I'm trying to only hammer on the new piece as I don't want to smash the existing rope pattern and have to fix it later. I've got the right size now and it's time to refinish the sizing piece and blend it into the rest of the ring. Some jewelers would just polish the piece as is and call it a day, but I pride myself on always recreating the pattern of the ring. My preferred method is to use these very thin cutting discs to carve the lines into the silver to create this three-dimensional rope pattern. Sometimes this is done with gravers, but in my experience that would take twice as long if not longer. Now that all the major work is done, I'm going to replace the missing diamond. I find adding some black antiquing liquid to the ring really helps give the rope pattern a beautiful contrast. Finally, the ring gets one last polish and then it'll be ready to return to Susan's finger. If you'd like me to work on your jewelry, please feel free to contact me through our website. If you just like watching these videos, please feel free to give a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.